So nice to be back to Santa Barbara, and uh, I look forward to be here longer uh, when uh, we organize this uh, swamp land programming for four weeks in February to, uh, from mid-February to mid-March. I plan to be here for the entire period, so, so we'll have more to discuss. Uh, but today I will talk about something which is seemingly unrelated to swamp land, although maybe there is some uh, 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 unseen connection in future. The title is High Energy Behavior of Marine Amplitude. This is an homage to the paper by David and Paul Mende. Uh, I'm, I'm not a native English speaker, so I wasn't sure whether I should put that here. But then there was this uh, paper by David that had the uh, article there, so I, I thought that, well, he, I know David is very careful with words, so, so <laughs> <laughs> I should just follow it. <laughs> and, uh, and this is work with uh, Matthew Doderson, who is a postdoc at uh, Calvary IPMU. Uh, so this paper appeared last week, and the day after, uh, there was another very interesting paper by uh, uh, Harder and Shinha uh, appeared, and uh, uh, they also discussed bound on very <coughs> amplitude. Uh, they are seemingly in different kinematic regime, so uh, I will tell you exactly what we did. And uh, they are looking at the regime where uh, conformal dimension is large, and you take both conformal dimension and ADS radius large, so that you can take flat space limit. And uh, so there could be relation between these two bounds. Their bounds are seemingly different. Our bound is about absolute value of the median amplitude, and this one is about uh, imaginary part of Mary amplitude. And uh, uh, in some sense, uh, this one may be more closer to the spirit of the Frosar bound that, uh, 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 that appeared earlier, uh, uh, 50 years ago, 58 years ago, I guess. Uh, so let me so, so start. So, so Frosar bound, I just mentioned the Frosar bound, but this is a famous bound for uh, quantum field theory. <laughs> Massive. Uh, quantum field theory uh, in four dimensions, and then the bound says something like uh, if you look at the uh, forward direction, then you take uh, uh, energy to be large, then it's bounded by e square log e square e, uh, something to that effect. This is by Frosar, I think in 1961. So, so natural question is that, is there something like that uh, in CFT? And uh, uh, so there are various ways to bound these days. So bootstrap is a very powerful way to give various constraints on CFT correlation function. And uh, that constraint operator spectrum and the operator product expansion coefficient, etc. But these are typically for, so far, the technique developed so far about information about the low-lying state, and is not about the uh, ultraviolet behavior of CFT. Uh, although, uh, in the case of a uh, uh, modular bootstrap, you can see the asymptotic high-energy behavior of the density of state. So, uh, so today, uh, I will study CFT <coughs> by using its Merin representation, and I will tell you more about it, but let me first write the formula. So if you have a CFT correlation function, endpoint function, so these are primary operators, and then suppose you are in Euclidean D dimension. Oh, by the way, so often I get confused, if, uh, especially when things involve the ADH CFT correspondence, what D is. So I take, in my talk, D is a dimension of space-time of CFT. So if you have ADS dual, it's D plus one dimension. So, so you, can, you have this, and then you have a bunch of integral. I will tell you exactly what these variables are. And then you have a Merin variable. And then you have a I and J goes from 1 to N uh, with difference raised to the power of... Uh, this gamma variable, and then there is a gamma function. So, so this is a transformation from coordinate representation to some other, so far, uh, 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 artificial space. And the integral is taken in the pure imaginary direction with some constant shift. 
And uh, uh, so I will tell you more about that later, how you choose C, etc. And this uh, M is called the Merlin amplitude. So the kind of bound that I'm going to uh, introduce uh, is a bound on this amplitude. And uh, so notation will be explained in more detail later. So the main result, in case uh, you have to leave or you have to check your email during the talk, <laughs> is that uh, uh, we'll focus on the case for n equal d plus 2 for reasons that will become clear. In this case, uh, kinematics become particularly simple. There is no fundamental physics reason, I think, that we have to restrict ourselves. And I would very much like to generalize to other point, but so far I can tell you about this particular case and I'll tell you why it simplifies. So in that case, I can say that uh, the amplitude for fixed angle is bounded by E to the D plus one minus uh, D, uh, where delta is uh, the uh, uh, conformal dimension of external operator. Here for simplicity, I'm taking all these have the same conformal dimension, but this can be generalized for uh, uh, E goes to infinity. Uh, this notation is different from this notation. I will tell you the translation between this and that. And uh, so here I take, I am there taking. So, 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 so I'm. Uh, no, this is NED. This is oh, NED. Yeah. This is NED. Oh, I'm interested in tools to four dimensional theory. Four dimensional. So then, so you. Yes. And that's would be five. N would be five, yes. <laughs> yes. So is this going to be directly related to the Fossart bound, or is it a uh, different? No, dynamic? well, it's not, all, well, it's very similar in spirit, but it's a CFT bound. And, uh, yeah. this, and, and, and I think that, that, yeah, so I don't know the precise relation between them. Okay. The uh, idea is somewhat similar in derivation. That's as much as I know. The is 4. 4. Equals four yeah, 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 yeah. Well, D equals equal 4. If D plus 1 equals 4. D plus 1 is imaginary part of that. Right, yes. Uh, two particle forms. Kind that's of right, that. yes. Although I think it generalizes. And in fact, there is a bulk argument for the Foisart bound based on when gravity starts to get strong. In oh, OK. So, and you do get the E log E, for example. Mm -hmm. um, in the context actually, of the Actually, here, here is actually, gravity is important. So, yeah, we will see. OK. So, yeah, so I, I very much want to generalize to this to other n. I have not so far succeeded in doing that, but I strongly suspect that there must be one. It's just that uh, we, we restricted to the case of this case because kinematics is simple. I think that this can be generalized. It's not simpler for a smaller n. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see that for small n, we don't have analogous conditions. So, so yeah. Well, I will tell you wh how you how we derive this. Yes. And uh, yes. Do you really mean much less than there, or just mean less? Well, to be precise, the condition is the limit of m e divided by e to the d plus one minus d plus two. Delta with E goes to infinity is zero. Well, that, or more precisely, the integral of this with this converges or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So, so these are the conditions. <laughs> so this talk is mostly about CFT. Uh, for the first two thirds of this talk, uh, I will not refer to ADS CFT or the bulk ADS, except for when I introduce some notation, I motivate that. But I would not assume the existence of ADS dual. Uh, in the last third of my talk, 20 minutes or so, uh, I will discuss what happens when uh, uh, ADS dual exists. So if you have ADS D plus one, CFT two, CFT D, excuse me, then uh, interestingly, if you have a three level Witten diagram, then it violates, violates this condition. So, so that means. This, yes? uh, 
Delta, of course, is greater than one, right? Uh, delta is greater than, well, yes, the delta is the finite, yes. Uh, yes, yes. So the right hand side. It goes to zero. Goes to zero. Yes. So, sorry? Rapidly. Right, well, it decays uh, power, like power, yes. So, so tree level Witten diagram does not have this property. Typically, if you calculate Mering amplitude using tree level Witten diagram, it's, it's a positive power of uh, energy. It's a polynomial interaction in the bulk. So, so it violates this condition. So, so if you just have perturbative uh, gravitational theory with finite number of particles, then the CFT dual violates this condition. Uh, string theory satisfies it. <laughs> Did you define M theta? Sorry? Did you define what M theta? This is finite. What is that? So, so, so this can be this can be generic. So, 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 so uh, we can we can we can choose this as far as it, it doesn't take some particular limit like zero or something, then then it can be. Uh, no, just, maybe I missed. Uh, yes. Your definition. Of yeah. So there is a. a yeah, yeah. So, so I'm sorry. So eventually, so, so I will later parameterize. Gamma as pi dot pj with some momentum, and theta is a relative angle of these vectors. So, so I haven't explained all the notation. Okay, yes, please. When you do have a gravity dual, is your large energy limit going to be the regime where you form black holes in the bulk? Well, so, 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 so this is what I would like to talk in the last third of the talk. But what we will see is that if you raise the energy, eventually, first, the string theoretical effect dominates, and eventually, black hole forms. For finite angle, it turns out that this effect is dominant and the black hole formation effect is subdominant. So this overwhelms the stringy gross mende type of behavior, overwhelms the effect. However, if you take the small angle limit in the iconal limit, just like uh, Gabriele Veneziano and the collaborator did, then there can be a kinematic region where black hole effect is dominant. So in either case, in either case, so what happens is that this effect modifies this power law behavior exactly in such a way that this is satisfied. So, so that's what I would like to show you in the last third of my talk. And by string theory, you mean tree level in string alpha? Tree level, yes. And finite alpha prime. Finite alpha prime is important. If we take a zero slope limit, then they get back to here where this is violated. Okay, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, one quick question. So, is this related in any way to the chaos bound for the ray limit of CFT correlators in some? Which bound? To the <coughs> bounds on the ray, ray, <coughs> ray limit of CFT correlators. Ray limit. Yeah. Ah, so it's a different kinematic yeah. limit, probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different. Yeah. Uh, any other question? Okay. So, so let me move on. This, is this the eraser? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so let me first clarify the notation. So string theory is going to give you exponential behavior. So if you're saying it satisfies it because... Well, exponential behavior that you found with Paul, yeah. translate, if you translate to the many amplitude, becomes inverse power of behavior, which exactly sort of, sort of satisfies this condition. So. Yes. Hey. So, uh, so sub, for sub, well, I will tell you, but for sufficiently large delta, it satisfies it. Yes. What does that mean in terms of string theory? Uh, so, uh, well, so, 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 the greater than one. The, 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 so, 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 I would. So, when you do the, uh, uh, when you pa perform this calculation with gross Mende amplitude. Uh, uh, we'll do some subtle point approximation to evaluate this. And so, so, so delta, if delta is sufficiently large, the subtle point is trustworthy, and then you can, you can, you can do it. I can tell you more detail when we get there. But the delta corresponds with the string theory. Yeah, the delta will translate to the mass of uh, stringy excitation. Yeah, well, but, uh, uh, but here I'm talking about delta in the external state. Yeah. So, so in the gross Mende case, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 but, but what happens? So, so in gross Mende case, uh, it's important that momentum goes to large, 
And that can be engineered not by mass, <laughs> not by mass or delta, but rather by the way that you approach the singularity. So, so it's not that the, the going to large energy is not organized by externally choosing conformal dimension or anything, which is that I think is that the difference between what we did and what uh, uh, Harda and Shinha did. Because here we are keeping the conformal dimension fixed, but we are choosing the kinematic configuration of excess so that it, uh, so that inside of ADS you start seeing high energy behavior. So that's what I would like to. Uh, explain. Yes. Something very puzzling about what you're saying. Maybe you'll get to this if we let you. If, if I ever get there, yes. <laughs> but if you go to very high energy and fixed angle, typically you do expect strong gravitational effects yeah. like black hole. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, so, so, so let, let's discuss that uh, in the third, last third of this talk. Okay. That uh, I, to, I told you there is a there effect there, but string effect is dominant. So I'll show you. Okay, so so you so let let me first explain what these gammas are, and uh, so so the gam so this is like Fourier transformation. So you have x coordinate representation and you transfer into gamma. So what you want is gamma to be essentially the same number, independent gamma as the number of cross ratio of x's, and indeed it is. So there is a nice way to parameterize it. So so first of all, this gamma has to satisfy these conditions. So this was actually. Uh, So, so this gamma should satisfy these conditions. And uh, if this satisfies these conditions, there is a nice uh, formula like that. And it was shown by uh, Gerhard Mach, uh, excuse me, uh, in uh, uh, 10 years ago. But he pointed out that if you write conformal correlation function in this way, then if you assume factorization for conformal uh, correlator, then it satisfies the required property for, M satisfies as if it is a flat space scattering amplitude. So it satisfies the various properties that flat space scattering amplitude would satisfy. So that was what he, he observed. That he, th this was a very nice way to translate the basic property of CFT into some properties that we expect for the amplitude. So later, uh, uh, this was further clarified by work, especially by uh, Juan Penedones, which I will discuss later. So this suggests that this is very much like Mandelstam variable for flat space. So it's natural to introduce, so this is, this is a constraint for gamma, and this constraint is satisfied by con considering some kind of momentum in some artificial space with masses given by delta. So it is. So if you have such momentum, then then this is satisfied and momentum is conserved. Okay, you can you, you can ask well, what are what are these p's, right? So so of course you one, first thing you, you need to check check is to make sure that this covers all the solution to this program to this linear program, and this is necessary and sufficient parameterization. And it turns out that if it, it is actually true. So PAs are good parameterization. If P's are a D plus one dimensional vector. But isn't there an issue of uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you know, large Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, so you, you, you know much, uh, much more than <laughs> so, 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 so what happens is that when n is less than d plus 2, provided n is less than d plus 2, that is that if n is less than d plus 2, then the number of independent cross ratio <coughs> of excess is equal to 1 half of n, n minus 3, and this is actually the same as the number of independent Mandelstam variable. So it works for, for this reason. For so n is greater than, so what happens is that you could, as far as n is less than d plus 2, then, so you have enough space for p to, to move around, and then, then if, there are, if there are no constraints, then, then this is necessary and sufficient. If there are too many n's, 
then there are linear relations between them. So then, then this doesn't work, so you have to do something more. So for my talk, I would be interested in the case when n equal d, n equal d plus one. So this parameterization is good. Uh, you, for other cases, you have to worry about it. So if you look at this amplitude, you see that there are poles in gamma function. And also, uh, uh, in an explicit example, Sorry? No, we are interested in the case when, uh, 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 yeah, n equal d, uh, excuse me, n equal d, d plus two. So it, it's, it's covered by this. Excuse me, I all, Yeah, it's, I, I apologize. Yeah, I misspoke. Yes, that was wrong. So you're, you're, I you explain why d plus two is better than d plus one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, so this has pole, and uh, this also has poles. Uh, actually, this has a sequence of poles, so, so uh, spaced by integer. So, so typically, uh, in the comp uh, imaginary plane, imaginary gamma plane, uh, there are poles in this direction and this direction. So the contour is chosen so that uh, it avoids this sequence, so like that. And then, then if you do that, then it's, it's a good dump. <laughs> so the uh, so main idea that I would like to uh, use uh, it's actually, uh, it was originally pointed out by uh, Juan Mardacena, David Simons Duffin, and uh, Ziboedov. So let me cite their paper. So this there is a beautiful paper about uh, four years ago by uh, Juan, David Simons Duffin, and Ziboedov. Where uh, they looked at uh, uh, Landau singularity both in CFT and ADS. So uh, we actually, in order to go to higher dimension, we had to generalize their analysis. So if, in fact, uh, if you generalize their kinematic analysis, so the picture that emerges is very nice. So let me first explain the, the, the type of singularity we're interested in, and then uh, uh, the kinematics associated with it. So we are interested in singularity in this correlation function. Uh, in uh, Laurentian space, Laurentian signature. So, uh, so consider we are considering uh, n equal d plus two points uh, on time times d minus one dimensional space. So you have a sphere times time. Uh, so, so I'm, I'm not going to talk about ADS yet, but uh, the ADS is a nice way to sort of reflect conformal symmetry on this space, so I'm going to use this. So, so D plus one dimensional ADS can be parameterized, uh, 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 embedded in the one more dimension space by, so you, you, all of you must have seen this parameterization, so you consider D plus two dimensional space and L is a radius of ADS, so this space gives you ADS. So, so you have ADS, and uh, so then CFT uh, on the boundary. So as you go to boundary, all the axes are scaled to be large. So that means that boundary CFT can be thought of as a limit when all of these axes are large, so namely L is relatively small. So in fact, you can write R times S D minus one as a solution to this equation. Equal zero now. But this is a, a, a still D plus one dimensional space. Then what you do is you take quotient where oh yeah, lambda uh, is uh, R uh, not equal to zero. Like this. Right. Two sphere of equal radii, and you're shrinking. You're in, you're yeah, you can you can the you can okay. say it that way. Yeah, that's right. So you can write this this circle is the same radius as this sphere or something like that, and, and then you my, take you take quotient. So it's like a projective space, but in Lorentzian signature, projective space. So this is a nice parameterization, and the reason that kinematics works nicely is that if you have uh, uh, 
n equal v plus two points, then they can summarize it in the square matrix. So, so you have this matrix X, which is like a collection of uh, n point. So, so, so suppose you have n point, n, d plus two point, then the, each one of them satisfies this. So, so you have uh, 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 d plus two times uh, d plus two matrix. Right? I hope that's clear. That's so, why d plus two is good. Sorry? That's why d plus two is good. I think, I think that if you are careful and uh, uh, think carefully about rectangular matrix, then you can do other things. We are just, we just wanted to put out this paper soon, so, so we didn't do sort of such, but uh, the, because uh, the point is clear even in this case. So, so, but we could do more sort of thing uh, later. In fact, uh, yeah, so maybe I'll come to that later. So now, uh, so there are two types of singularity one can consider. So there is a situation where you choose some boundary point. So let's say, for example, in this case, you choose four points. Suppose this is a one plus one dimensional CFT, so the bulk is three dimensional, and so then D plus two is four, so you choose four point. So you can have a situation where you have a point in the bulk of ADS, and then you can connect these points to the boundary with light-like geodesic. So, and then in such a way that momentum conservation can be satisfied at this bulk point, so this, this point, point called the Landau singularity in the bulk. There is also another situation, and uh, so now I'm testing my own drawing skill, which is the, so suppose you, you choose another four point, but these points are now located on the boundary. So suppose this is on the other side. So then it goes around and uh, so they look, they look the same, but this point is on the, the all, these, all these counts are boundary. So you have a boundary right, right like curve located and then co coinciding with some boundary point. So you have a bulk Landau singularity and then you have a boundary Landau singularity. So you have these two. The four points are Boundary. All these yellow points are on the boundary. So in this case, what happens is that uh, you can choose four points on the boundary, and then you shoot right away inside of ADS, and you ask whether they can meet at the point. So then, are they continuously related? Do you take that? Yeah. So, so that's what I want to tell you. So, so this is this is e uh, more generic than this one. This. So, 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 so the reason that this pr presentation is nice is that you can easily sum, uh, uh, represent these kinematically in terms of this matrix, which is to say... Isn't the, the second one just uh, uh, limit of this? A limit of this, yes. So limit of this, and so, so you can say that in the, uh, using linear algebra language, that is that uh, the bulk, there is a bulk Landau singularity. <coughs> And only if the rank of x is equal to, or equal or less than, I should say, d plus one. Namely that if it, the, the bulk Landau singularity is co-dimension one in the configuration space. Whereas there is a boundary Landau singularity if and only if the rank of x is less than D. So, 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 so this is, this is a difference. So, 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 so you can take the boundary Landau singularity as a limit of bulk singularity, and you see that it's a co-dimension two subspace of this configuration space. I, I think that if you are, if you are in careful, and if you think more clearly, then, then you can generalize this to so rectangular. The bulk singularities of the correlation function is a function of the axis. Sorry? These are possible singularities. In the space of excess. In space of excess. Yes. So I will clarify what meaning. So, uh, so the bulk Landau singularity would be like the thing which you said where this M much less than E bound is violated because this is like a tree level Witten diagram, right? Like the, the first one which you have drawn. 
So uh, does the second one, when you have a boundary lambda singularity, still violate that bound? That no, so I will tell you. Okay. So, so my, my bound is actually basically to avoid this, but, for, but that, that bound arose this. And I will give you, tell you why. Okay, so give you a, let me give, do, a, do some example because this will clarify it. So example, yes? It didn't explain this, but you know, I don't understand. This is like you know, land doesn't matter. If the rank is, if there's no determinant, it doesn't matter. So rank is D equals plus two, then you can move or you can. There are no constraints, yes. You can perform the right from where it's sort of to the same behavior. Yes. That's the thing. Yeah, so, 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 so what happens is that the generic case, you cannot have this. But then as you take the, this co-dimension one subspace, you start forming it. And then the, our, our point is that this corresponds to high energy limit. This, this would correspond to high energy scattering. Because Landau singularity is a UV, UV program. Oh, and singularity. Singularity, but it, it, it reflects on the, it, it's characterized by the fact that you have light-like geodesic. So, so basically, for example, if you write a Feynman diagram, So, for example, in the perturbative presentation of quantum field theory, Landau singularity appears in the uh, uh, high energy behavior of this internal momentum integral, if I understand it correctly. Well, that's very high energy. Yeah. Well, so, well, so maybe we can discuss later, but uh, the, because this is a light cone, so this is like, for example, the limit of light, high energy limit of light like geodesics in some sense. Yeah, so, so let me give you some examples. So, so get the example is D equals three. So that means that we have these five points. Okay, so that, so suppose I choose five points so that the two of them are located at some time here. So this is one and two. And then the other three points are located at some other point. Here, here, here. So suppose you have such a situation. And then this is time zero, and this is time time. And then uh, this is uh, now S2, because we are considering uh, uh, CFT3. Okay? So, so we have S2 times some time direction. And then. Uh, if you calculate the determinant of x, so you have a five by five matrix. So if you calculate the determinant, you find that this is equal to sine tau times some polynomial, which is a position of these operators on S2. So you have, you have this kind of, so you can calculate the determinant. So you see that when sine vanishes, Determinant vanishes linearly, so it's a rank, rank reduced by one. So, so therefore, uh, uh, when you, you have tau equal to pi, for example, and then uh, uh, all the point, and then generic points on the spatial Cauchy slice, then the rank of x is equal to four. So now, remember that if this is pi, if you have uh, two points at arbitrary point on S2, and if you move the other three points at tau equal to pi, then you can actually show that there is a bulk Landau singularity. Now, the momentum won't be conserved. In momentum has to be conserved, yes. Yeah, so in general, they won't be. If you're pointing well, it's a discrete choice. I would, so yeah, it's, you can, you, as far as some discrete condition is satisfied, which I will tell you, then momentum is conserved. Because light -like, if you have light-like singularity, then, then you can uh, uh, scale the momentum. And so momentum conservation is actually a discrete choice. It's a, it's a discrete choice, but I, I guess I was just saying that yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. So, going to be true that if your determinant vanishes for generic point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I misspoke. So, 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 so provided some discrete condition satisfied, then, then so, 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 but the, run, the dimension doesn't decrease. Yeah. So now, so, so this one vanishes, 
basically when uh, all five points are on the same uh, 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 on the same uh, uh, large circle. By that I mean the following. So I have S2. And uh, so because we have conformal symmetry, so I can choose any three of them on the same large circle. So I can choose, for example, that uh, uh, one to be at zero and two to be at infinity. And then three to be at one. You can, you can always do that. But then the other two points are somewhere else. So if you draw a picture, these three, these three points are located here, here, and here. And then there are two more points somewhere. Right? But these two points can also be on the large circle. But these two large circles may not coincide. What happens is that if these two large circles coincide, and if all the points are on the same circle, then you can show that this is actually rank x is equal or less than 3. So the condition for the uh, bulk Landau singularity, the, 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 the bulk Landau singularity to exist is, uh, is the condition, is equivalent to say that all these five points on, on the SMS2. Now coming back to uh, 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 Gary's question, so in order to, for the momentum conservation to work, we just need to do the discrete choice, which is that first two points are say at zero and infinity. So there at least there must be at least one point on both sides of this. And if this is satisfied, then the momentum conservation is satisfied. So that's what I mean by discrete choice. You had a question, Steve. I was just saying, this is the same circle at different times or equal times? The same time, uh, di different times. So two are okay. at tau equal zero, and then two okay. are, three are at tau equal pi. And the condition is that if you project that onto S2, then they have to be on the same large circle. Okay. So, so this is the this is the kinematics. So what we want to say is that uh, uh, so from the point of view of uh, uh, boundary CFT, the bulk Landau singularity is a weird thing. And in fact, if you calculate the CFT correlation function in the case when you can calculate like free bosons, etc., these Bulk Landau singularity does not exist, but boundary Landau singularity of course exists. So, so that means that the Bulk Landau singularity has to be resolved in some, say, in some way. So then the, the question is that how we uh, uh, sort of identify the way that it, it can be resolved, and that leads to some condition for mirroring amplitude. And so that's what uh, basically we did. That is that uh, uh, we start with, uh, say, for, again, I'm going to give you an example where Whereas uh, I we generalized it to uh, generic situation, so this is a case when CFT two, so so d equal two and n equal four. So in that case, uh, you have four points, so you have exactly the standard uh, Landau diagram. So I guess uh, in view of time, I cannot write the expression. Yes, uh, well, you have two variables. Find the condition of the and the general argument is like uh, the Yes, so, 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 so we basically generalize their condition. Uh, so, so, so they pointed out that there is, a, there is this kind of singularity and they discussed how they can possibly be resolved. So what we did are two things. The one is that we actually gave exact, precisely the condition for the bulk singularity to be resolved and that is that inequality. And the second is that we showed, sorry? The, the one that I said at the beginning, which is that the absolute value of M is bounded by E to the whatever, D, D plus one minus D plus two times delta. Uh, and so that's one thing. And the other thing we did is to show exactly how the, in the, uh, it is resolved from the point of view of uh, string theory in the bulk. Yes? When you say that it must be resolved, I mean, it's certainly there in the large N, large coupling limit. It, it, uh, for for uh, the, the limit. In the limit. In the so limit for, for, for large but finite to first coupling, it's resolved. It's resolved, right. 
I see. So that's what you're, you're looking at. Mm. Large but finite. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Yeah. So, 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 so as I said, uh, uh, three level written diagram violated. So that means that if N and the two fifth coupling are strictly infinite, then it's violates the bound and the bulk sing Landau singularity exists. But those are the limit of CFT. And uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, so that's, that's. That's connected with the flat space limit, really, then. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so, 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 we, we'll let's discuss that later. So, so we have this kind of things. So, uh, so in this case, we have, uh, so this depends on only one variable z, which is a, a cross ratio of this four point. And uh, uh, so, so in this case, we have this Mandelstam variable, but we can also write it in terms of uh, energy and uh, scattering angle. Or in, so it's actually more convenient for us to write it in this way. And uh, I, I think in my note, I use omega here. So then, uh, uh, then you, can, you can rewrite this, and then when, uh, uh, in fact, the divergence happens so bulk Landau singularity happens for, from large omega regions, for, for, as I will tell you. So we can actually uh, do approximate this integral for large omega in this way. So when omega is large, actually, this angle theta is determined by the kinematic configuration of the boundary point. So it's sort of fixed. But omega is to be integrated, and the omega of 4 delta minus 4 times e to the 4 omega square log of uh, minus absolute value of z, 1 plus absolute value of z minus. So, uh, so you, can, you can actually massage this uh, 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 max formula for um, uh, Merlin transform in this, re in this way for contribution from large omega. Okay, so, so, so the question is that whether, whether there is any divergence. And uh, uh, so, uh, so in this configuration, what is the condition that the rank of x is three? So you look at you can you can actually look at the condition. You can calculate. So this is a four by four matrix now. So you can calculate the four by four matrix and ask when the rank becomes three. And you can show that the rank becomes three when minus absolute value of z. 1 plus 1 minus absolute value of z is equal to 1, namely when this value. So in this case, the, the, uh, in fact, you can see that in this case, there can be potential divergence because uh, uh, in this case, there is no exponential factor, so you have this thing. So, so if m does not decay fast enough, for example, in the case of bulk Landau diagram, bulk Witten diagram, m is a positive uh, monomial of W, omega. So then this doesn't converge, when, provided that delta is reasonable. Yes. Theta of z is determined by, so, 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 so I haven't explained what theta of z is, but uh, this, is, this is actually, this is a function of z, omega, and theta. And then we are interested in the contribution from omega is large. So then it turns out that you can do subtle point integral for uh, approximation for theta. So theta is determined by cross ratio after this. So I, I omitted the skip, uh, step in deriving this. But it doesn't depend on omega. It only depends on the cross ratio. The omega dependence scales up. Yes, other point for large omega, yes. So what we first do the restrict this to large omega region, and then do the theta integral first, and then, then it's restricted to some particular value depending on z. So as far as z is generic, then this is fixed angle. And in fact, when in the limit when this becomes that, it actually is finite angle. And then, then, uh, uh, then this. Okay. Uh, so, so, so that's that's the Landau thing. So this is where the Landau singularity is. Yes. Uh, how can the ratio of two positive numbers? Yeah. <laughs> so that's a very good question. So this never happens in Euclidean space. So in Euclidean space, this is not, as, you, as David correctly pointed out, in Euclidean space, this can never be achieved. So what happens is this. So, so you have this, but we are in Lorentzian space. So what happens is that suppose 
you start with a situation where all these four points are on the same uh, tau, the value tau equals zero. But then you consider moving this to finite tau, and eventually move tau to be pi. So you move this so that eventually it becomes pi. Right? So that's what uh, you want to do. So we're going to move these two points along with tau. Okay? So then what happens is that uh, well, there are singularities. And so, so what happens is that uh, uh, these two points start moving around. And then, then what happens is that, uh, therefore, z, so you have z and z bar. So initially, z and z bar are somewhere in the complex plane here, the real number, because it's a real number. So then what happens is that the z, I should use a different color, because these are not reflected on this. So z uh, moves around this and then lands somewhere here. So this is z. So this is as uh, tau goes from 0 to pi. z goes around this in a complex plane. And then z bar goes in opposite direction. So then what happens is that uh, to look at the absolute value of z, absolute value of z is the square root of z and z bar. And uh, both z and z bar, uh, so let's see. So, so both and uh, z goes around 0 once, but z bar doesn't go around 0. So that means that uh, in this process, it changes the sign. On the other hand, on the other hand, 1 minus z is square root of absolute value of 1 minus z and 1 minus z bar. And both of them goes around 1. So they both, they both change sign. So that means that it actually remains like this. So that means that after this analytic continuation, the, plus become, the minus becomes plus. So then this is satisfied. So this is. Uh, what happened? Yes? It's satisfied by z greater than 1. So it's, it's, satisfied, it's satisfied when z equals z bar, actually. Yeah. When z, equals, when z equals z bar, this square root is resolved. So, so, so what happens is that, uh, what, what happened to 1 minus z? 1 minus z is 1 minus z, 1 minus z bar. But uh, in fact, it turns out that this final value is greater than 1. So this is actually z minus 1. So z min 1 plus z minus 1 is z. So, so it turns out 1 minus z minus 1 is 1, which is the same as plus z. So, so it becomes 1. So, 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 so for any z. satisfy for any z equals z bar. Yeah, it's all real. So, so, that, so that's why it's co-dimension one. So z equals z bar is a co-dimension one condition. So it turns out that near z equals z bar, you can actually write this as z minus z bar divided by 8z square z minus 1 square. So you can write it that way. So, 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 so you see that uh, you have this, this, and then this. So that means that, for example, if this is a power law, this is a positive power in omega, then there will be a power singularity at z equals z, z, z equals z bar, because you have this integral. So if you do this integral and we scale the integral, you find a power singularity, which is not, should not be there. So that means that it has to be resolved. So, so, but then it's easy to see how this singularity can be resolved. In order for the singularity to be resolved, it has to be that this integral should be convergent even when z equals z bar. So let me actually erase this and write the integral clearly so because this is the important point. So if you, if, you, uh, if you combine this, then what happens is that in this limit, the integral becomes this times exponential of 2z square z minus 1, z minus z bar square. 
uh, omega square. So you see that uh, uh, when z is not equal to z bar, this is pure imaginary. So the, the, this is, yes? Sorry? Log. I had the log. Uh, let's see. Did I have a log? I forgot. Oh, the, the, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I had the log. So, so previously I had the log here. So I, so I had the log of uh, minus z, one plus uh, one minus z. So, oh, that's one plus yeah, 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 yeah. And then, then in, in, when z equals z bar, this becomes one. Log becomes zero. So we can expand around z equals z bar. And then, then it becomes log. This log is approximated by this. In where? In in this or this? No. So there, there was a, so the formula I was writing was this. I understand. But first, say z equals the one that z zero, zero is omega squared. Let me see. So let me first let me write the original formula. Here z equals z bar. Yeah. So 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 originally. Instead of the precise formula was that this is equal to four omega square log of minus d divided by one plus one minus d. Yeah, no, I'm just asking. Yeah, I understand z equals z bar. Yeah. One region, but then near z equals zero. Ah. There's a power law. Yes, thank so you. So 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 z equals zero is a special kinematics. So so I'm assuming that z is generic, but z equals z bar. So, so you can, in addition, take. Endpoints. Yeah. Endpoints. Yeah. So, so, so you can have higher codimensional singularity where you can still have uh, divergence. And I will, if I have time, I will discuss that. Uh, that corresponds to boundary light, light con singularity, okay. the, the Landau singularity. So, bulk, so here I'm talking about bulk Landau singularity, which is codimension one. That's like one of those points hit zero. Yeah, so the bulk Landau singularity happens when just one condition, which is move this to here. And uh, uh, the bulk boundary Landau singularity requires these four points to be co coordinated. So for example, well, if you take z goes to zero in addition, then there'll be some additional thing happens. So. That's, can I yeah, go? Ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, so you see that, uh, therefore, the way singularity happens is that if this does not decay fast enough, then this exponential factor has to help you to converge this integral. So that means that if z equals z bar, there is no exponential factor. So then in integral diverges, and so. So therefore, it's clear how you can resolve this singularity. So uh, singularity, so Landau singularity, at uh, z core z bar is resolved if and only if this integral is convergent, which is that d omega, omega, m of omega, omega to the four delta minus four converges. So if this integral converges, then I can set the z core z bar and then you get finite answer. There is no singularity. So, uh, so and then this is necessary because if this doesn't converge, exponential factor should help you. So that means that there is a divergence when z equals z bar. So this is a condition. So this is actually the condition that I wrote that uh, 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 this has to be less than, in this case, four minus, uh, uh, sorry, three minus four delta. So that uh, you, have, you, have a singular, uh, you have you have you have resolution. Okay, so this generalized to uh, ha arbitrary delta. There is a simple scaling argument to show that, uh, in general, uh, uh, in general, uh, uh, d plus one minus d plus two delta is uh, necessary and sufficient for analog of this integral to converge. So, therefore, analog of this type of uh, singularity to be absent. Okay, so in the remaining uh, uh, four minutes, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to uh, briefly tell you about uh, how uh, 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 ADS-CFT resolved this singularity. 
And uh, actually, this idea goes back to what Steve was doing in the 90s. I remember, I think around 98 or 99, Steve spent the sabbatical at Berkeley when I was there. And so you were thinking about S matrix uh, in the limit of uh, ADS uh, correlation functions. And uh, so I actually, I think I understand Huao Penedones was a postdoc here. Yeah. And he worked with you and developed the idea and later uh, wrote some nice paper, uh, which is. Uh, so I think that was very much inspired for the kind of work that uh, Huao was doing with Steve and others at uh, Santa Barbara, so it's a nice place to talk about it. And in particular, uh, Penedones pointed out that uh, if you have uh, ADS CFT correspondence, and uh, if the bulk theory has some uh, uh, gravitational theory, which for large radius of ADS can be approximated by gravitational theory of flat space, then there is a direct relation between Mering amplitude and flat space scattering amplitude. And the formula he wrote was, uh, was this. The same D. So this is a flat space amplitude. Yeah, actually, this goes back to an earlier paper where um, Joao and uh, Mira Gary and mm -hmm. myself extracted the flat space right. amplitude as the coefficient of the singularity. Yeah, and there is also related work by uh, 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 Joe Polchinski and uh, yeah, Stadahar. Um, I think, no? There was a later paper with Joao. Oh, yeah, maybe, yeah, that the, I, 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 I misremember the causality between them. <laughs> so anyway, so, so, so from this series of work, there is a nice relation between the flat space scat uh, scattering amplitude, which appear in the interior of ADS, to the Mary amplitude like this. So, so this is very nice then, because we know a lot about flat space amplitude in string theory. So then we can translate that to Mary uh, language. So what you can show is that, for example, if the flat space amplitude is polynomial, monomial of uh, momentum, then Mary amplitude is also monomial. That's what I, I meant by when you say that three, if you have a three-level Witten diagram, then this condition is not satisfied because this is a fixed polynomial. And uh, so then, 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 then this condition is not satisfied for sufficiently large delta. Uh, but, for example, if you have gross Mende behavior, then it's a different thing because uh, uh, David and Paul pointed out that in string theory, that for finite angle scattering, there is an exponential decay of the flat space amplitude. And we can just plug this into here and then see what happens. And then what happens is that uh, uh, this is going to go like uh, L string omega f of theta to square root times d minus summation i delta i. So you see that this is going to go to omega of d minus d plus 1 delta. This is, this, is, this is really nice because this is exactly what required. So this is sm smaller than omega of d plus 1 minus d plus Two, uh, sorry, so d plus, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, d plus, so there is something, yeah, 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 d plus two, that was why I was mistaken, minus d plus two, delta. So just uh, just uh, one power of uh, omega lower. So, so, so this, this, is, this is exactly what's uh, required by convergence. I think, that, are, are you waiting for, uh, to use this room? <laughs> so okay, anyway, so this satisfies this condition. Okay, so, uh, so, so this is, this is uh, most I wanted to say. If, I give, if you could give me one more minute, uh, I wanted, yeah? This is for D equals. This is for any D. This is for d equal to n equal 4. So d equal to. But doesn't the saturation doesn't, doesn't give you something that is logarithmic? Uh, so, so if this is like this, 
then it's logarithmically divergent. So that's why it has to be much smaller. So for example, this would give you convergence. This would give, this would, so this would give you amplitude which goes like one over omega, which is logarithmically divergent. Your amplitude goes like one over omega square. The paper is much smaller. It's just not below what we require. Oh, but not even logarithmically below. Right. Surprising that. I mean, yeah, it's very soft. Exponential decay, which you think we really soft, is yeah, yeah. It's just barely squeaking. It's very, out. it's very avoiding the singularity. Barely avoiding. And worse than that, if you look at again high energy scattering fixed angle in due to gravity, right? Uh, we wrote a paper about this, David. Yeah, I thought we finally agreed on it. Then. Gravitational effects can become important, and mm -hmm. uh, I think something even bigger than that. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, so this is what we found. So you can ask, well, is, is then a gross Mendel behavior is so strong can it resolve the boundary land of singularity too? It should, which should, it should not. Right. So we need to test it. So we tested it. So so so, so this is how we found, uh, figured. So let's consider again the case that we studied earlier, which is d equals three. N equal five, which is uh, the case that I, I explained the existence of singularity where you have uh, two points at tau equal zero and the other point at tau equal pi. And I told you that uh, uh, in order for the bulk Landau singularity ex exists, it's sufficient for these two sets of points to be separated by pi. But in order for the boundary Landau singularity exists, then all these has has to be on the same right circle. So I told you that uh, three of them can be always be on the same circle. So three of them can be like this. But then there are uh, another circle, which you may call phi four and phi five, where these uh, uh, extra point can be located. So this is like, uh, oh sorry, the color is wrong. So this is like uh, one, two, three, four, five. So you can have that situation. So, so then what you can show, the, what you find is that uh, as far as tau equal pi, then the, the rank of x is uh, four. But then if phi four and phi five go to zero with phi four over phi five fixed, then rank becomes three. So you can ask where, that, is, could, could there be a singularity like that? So, so you can actually show that uh, by using Penedone's formula, you can show that this becomes some function of setas, and then ratio of four, five, 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 four, and five, five, divided by sine of uh, phi four to five delta minus four times integral of zero to infinity of the omega, omega of five delta minus five of A of omega. So, so, so you can use Penedone's formula to write five dimension, uh, four, uh, uh, ADS four, five point amplitude uh, in this way. So you have this uh, flat space amplitude integrated. And this is actually convergent provided this condition is satisfied. So this part factorizes and then there is a singularity coming from, from this sign factor. When, when, when phi goes to zero where all these points lies on the same large circle, you get singularity exactly as required for the boundary Landau singularity. And however first A converges, even like gross Mende behavior, it won't help you. So this is sort of a very reasonable conclusion that if you have a gross Mende behavior in the bulk, then uh, uh, you have bulk Landau singularity resolved exactly as doctor ordered but then uh, uh, the boundary Landau singularity is not resolved. So you can ask, well, wh what about black hole? Eventually, if you raise the energy sufficiently large, black hole should form. It turns out that uh, uh, the, the effect by black hole formation is subleading. 
to the, uh, 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 to the gross Mendel behavior for fixed angle, which is actually expected from uh, 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 flat space kinematics too. But uh, if you take the iconal limit, then there is a kinematic region where a black hole dominates, and so it's interesting to look at uh, this behavior. The, yes? Okay. Small theta. Right, for, for small theta, yes. Yeah, fixed small theta, high energy. Yeah, but small. But what if, so if you were to, um, you know, uh, what happens to string theory, of course, is that each order, if you try to sum all the orders, you know, e to the omega squared, you get e to the omega. Right, so it's a different behavior. Different. So, uh, so what happens is that, in fact, the condition for this is much weaker than this. Uh, provided that uh, the, the integral, that expression that I wrote, uh, converges reasonably, then, then you, uh, this behavior is reproduced. So, so, uh, so in fact, the weaker version of this still sort of produce this uh, behavior. Uh, so you, the another question you can ask is that, uh, well, this is about pure ADS, and so can you do analog of this in a black hole background or finite temperature? Yeah. What is the required condition? So, 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 namely, what CFT predict for this one, right? So, uh, yeah, so that's a very good question. So, namely, that what is the absolutely necessary ultraviolet behavior for flat space amplitude for, 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 for this to be true? And, uh, uh, yeah, in fact, there is, there is some uh, weak condition I could, yes? Sort of to saturate this panel. Yeah, so that, that's, that's a very good question. We have not been able to find one. So, so this is like a, a one power of omega less than what you need. So, so it, it can be sort of, there can be a little bit softer ultraviolet behavior, which can still avoid the singularity. And we haven't found a nice way to formulate it in the flat space amplitude language. But I think that's very interesting. I mean, as you know, in the real world, the first time down is effectively Yes. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether this is a strong, this is as good as that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, nobody's going to Okay. Yeah. Um, Hi, Dave. <laughs> I'm just tired of sitting on the floor, so I'm standing. Oh, uh, okay. We didn't think you came through the window. Warm <laughs> hole. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's it. Thanks so much. Thank you.